you want to write a scientific paper or thesis and formulate a phenomenal research question, then you've come to the right place. In this video, you will learn exactly how to master this task. I will not only give you a proven formula on how to carve out an intriguing research question, but also provide you with actionable examples. If you stay until the end of this video, you will have the first draft of your research question right in front of you. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Many thanks to Scribber for sponsoring this video. More about Scribber later. The research question of your paper or thesis is the holy grail in your quest for a good grade. Since you want to follow a strong argument in your paper, you should first pose an existing problem at the beginning of it. Subsequently, at the end of the introduction, you then set up the research question. It will be the reader's guide for your scientific work from now on. The following tasks will be taken over by the research question for your paper or thesis. The rhetoric of your paper improves, the basic concepts of your paper are narrowed down, you know in which direction you have to research literature, and your research goals are set in stone. Thus, setting up a research question at an early stage has several advantages. On the one hand, you know in the creative process how you should proceed with your work, and on the other hand, the reader knows which problem your work is pursuing at all. For term papers, you should always formulate a research question. Here, one question can usually be quite sufficient, but two research questions are also okay. For larger projects, such as a master's thesis or even a doctoral dissertation, there may be more research questions. A regular thesis usually gets by with two solid research questions. Another way to split up your research questions are sub-questions. This is quite a proven way for longer papers. However, too many research questions will make you quickly lose your focus. At the beginning you will think, how will I ever be able to fill so many pages on such a simple question? Trust me, afterwards you will hardly know what to cut in order to stay within the given page limit. But for now, let's take care of developing your research question. If you believe your instinct, all possible W words would be suitable for a research question. The truth, however, is a little different. In my opinion, the question words how, to what extent, and, okay, here's a W, what, are the most suitable question words to formulate your research question. If you are not bound to a particular research paradigm that predetermines the type of research question, I strongly recommend that you begin your research question with the word how. Why is that? Simply because of the answer this question word allows. If you ask with who, why or when, the answer to your research question is limited in terms of possible answers. A how question is also an open question, which is suitable for the purpose of a paper. Only in rare cases or very narrow research designs are we in search of an answer to a closed research question. In a scientific paper or thesis, you want to investigate a problem from a certain angle and find the answer to your research question. However, the letter should always be formulated in such a way that it does not exclude other answers. Formulate your research question in such a way that you can answer it openly and flexibly, and still precisely. This is not to say that you do not have an idea of a possible answer in mind when you write your question. It is quite the contrary. If you can already roughly estimate what the result of your argumentation, data analysis or literature review etc. will be, formulating a research question is much easier. The question word you choose also depends on the type of research question. Roughly, the following question types can be distinguished. A descriptive question could be How do commercial organizations communicate during self-inflicted crises on social media? Or an explanatory question 
Why do corporate communication strategies on social media differ from traditional crisis PR? A design question. What communication strategies are appropriate for corporate social media crisis management? This might be especially relevant for practically oriented disciplines, such as mechanical engineering, organization science, computer science, etc. A forecasting question. How will the demand for skilled knowledge workers develop in the next five years, taking into account the developments of the industry 4.0? Evaluating question. How will the introduction of a statutory health card affect the privacy concerns of patients? And then there is a rather exotic type of question, which is an utopian question. What will the knowledge worker archetype look like in 10 years? What are potential consequences for corporate culture? My tip is formulate two to three different research questions for your topic and use different question types. Send these to your supervisor by email or take them with you to the next consultation hour. My experience and estimate is that most common question types for undergraduate research are evaluative or descriptive. At this point, you are ready to formulate your research question. To do this, we need the topic that you have wisely thought about or have been assigned. The narrowing down of your topic must now also be reflected in the research question. Let's work with an example. Your overall topic is social media marketing. How can you break down this topic and create a question that is as precise as possible? First, limit yourself to partial aspects. Example, Twitter. Limit yourself to a geographical area. For example, Germany. And limit yourself to a period of time. Example, during the Volkswagen diesel scandal. Now, merge your narrowing with the question type you selected earlier. For the example, this could be, how did VW communicate over the course of the 2015 diesel scandal on Twitter? The more concise your research question is formulated, the better you can use it for the development of your overall argument. Make sure to explain every concept you use in your research question prior to introducing it. Typically, that will be the introduction. It must not happen that the reader stumbles upon an ambiguous concept in your research question without being introduced to it earlier. Before we get to some examples, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribber. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribber. Just have a look at scribber.com and send me a short email to info at schreib.eu for an exclusive coupon code. But now here are a few examples from different disciplines to give you some inspiration for your research question. Perhaps you will recognize a pattern which will help you to develop your own interesting research question. How does servant leadership affect the corporate culture in medium-sized companies in the digital economy in Canada? To what extent are recipients of computer games with violent content morally sensitized? To what extent does the retweeting behavior of police accounts on Twitter influence individual decision-making in crisis situations? How can serious games promote social competence in elementary school students? To what extent can belt drives in large agricultural vehicles be optimized by reducing vibrations? I don't know. To what extent can augmented reality applications improve user experience in logistics management? Even a research question from the field of theoretical physics follows the same basic pattern. No matter the methodology, no matter the discipline, anyone can formulate a good research question if he or she follows the rules that you've just learned. With a little practice, it gets easier with every scientific project. Now, before you start formulating your own research question, you should learn which mistakes you should avoid at all costs. 
if you take care to avoid all of these pitfalls, you will be able to create a perfect research question. Deadly sin number one. Your research question has a yes or no answer. Example, is enjoyment the deciding factor in choosing entertainment media? Two, your research question is too broad. Example, how can social media be implemented to increase company sales? Three, your research question does not include the most important concepts of your work. Four, it is impossible for you to answer the research question. Five, your research question does not incorporate your theory, if you use one. Six, your research question is not relevant. And seven, your research question is too long. Example, to what extent can moral disengagement theory be extended with consideration of Bushman's general regression model in relation to the perceived enjoyment of online multiplayer users? Are you still here? We are not quite at the end yet. Hang in there, you are about to have all the information you need for mastering your research question. Where do you position your research question? In rare cases, your question may arise from the literature, in which case it would appear at the end of the literature section. However, my suggestion is to introduce the research question earlier. The question should be positioned almost at the end of the introduction after motivating your research in describing the research problem. How to answer the research question. You will answer your question in detail in the discussion section of your paper or thesis. Here you address each of the findings you highlighted in your main body and review them for relevance against the research question. You will also relate it to the literature you have previously selected as the basis for your argument. You also answer your research question in your conclusion. Here, however, you get very specific and summarize the findings in a few sentences. When writing your conclusion, keep your research question in mind and try to answer it as directly as possible. If you can do that, you've already done a lot right. If you made it this far into the video, congratulations. It was a hard piece of work, but it will pay off because with an excellently formulated research question, you can easily win over your supervisor's goodwill and increase your chances on a good grade. Now get to work and formulate your own research question.